Well, dad said the other day that he, he thought somebody stole your car. He didn't know <laughs> who was inside it. It looked like there was, I had my big hood on uh, from my sweatshirt. And yeah, I think he did. He thought, well, who is that? Who is that but place? I don't care because I was warm. Welcome to A Home That Heals. I'm Bree, along with my mom, Dee, and thank you for joining us today. Have you noticed those subtle messages out there that parents, grandparents, and families are hearing that sound something like this? You aren't quite enough for your kids. You just don't know enough. You aren't the expert, and somebody else could definitely do a better job. Well, we know this. God's message to you doesn't sound like that at all. His message reminds us that He will equip and guide you and has uniquely made you for this role and for your kids. Even when you fail, and daily and miserably, which is what we're talking about today on A Home That Heals. So sit down because you're about to hear a big confession. I don't know, Brie, if you've ever heard that expression, eating crow. Have you heard that? (laughs) No. No? (laughs) But I don't want to eat crow. So please tell me you're not making that for dinner today. Well, no, I'm not. But I think you're going to eat crow a little bit today. And so am I, (laughs) because we have... As you just kind of teased, we have a confession to make, and that's um, that's eating crow. Oh, we do. Remember that episode we did a while back? Um, maybe you listened to it. Hopefully, you didn't. And if you didn't, just don't worry about it. Like, don't don't even go there. <laughs> oh, oh, it's episode one forty six. It was called "Challenge Accepted for a Winter Mood Boost," and it was about getting outdoors. We we recorded it, I think, in October. Um, you know, it was starting to get a little chilly. We were looking at the winter and. And um, we knew it was going to be hard to get outside. We just know that, you know, as the as the winter rolls in, it's just a little bit more difficult to be outdoors. And we had spent all summer, spring, fall, you know, outside, soaking up the sun, loving, you know, working with our hands. And and we knew there's benefits to that, right? Like we felt so good. It's that feeling you get, you know, when you're out in the nature and out in the fresh air. It's how you feel after a good brisk walk. You renew your spirit and your joy and your energy. All right. That's exactly what we said in that episode (laughs) that you're talking about. We just were preaching it and we thought we had it so in us. We were so convinced that we could power through winter and still get the kids outside every single day. Yeah. And then it like so many things. I mean, do you, maybe that's why it turned so bad. Maybe <laughs> it was like, okay, you think you can do it? All right, you're going to see a winter like none other, which it wasn't actually like none other, but it wasn't snowmageddon, but it no. was oh, windy. windy. And I mean, rem- so you guys, we talked about, like we were so pumped for this. We were we were going to create this whole obstacle course oh, for yeah. the kids to go through. <laughs> yeah, that's big and plans. we were going to just like, figure out how to get outside every single day. And, you know, we preached to you about this whole idea. I can't remember. We, I, I stole it. So I heard it from another mom, but it's, you know, it's all in how you look at the weather. Just tell your kids like, come on kids, let's grab a coat. It looks a little windy or, oh, we might need our umbrella today. Let's go splash <laughs> in the mud puddles with our mud boots. I, we were so ready for this challenge, but guess what? <laughs> Well, I think it was like two days after we did that podcast that that suddenly the weather just changed. And I'm not kidding. I think you're making excuses right now. Well, I am, but like, let's just say it. We failed. We did. You're making excuses. Like, you know, we could have powered through. It was windier. (laughs) It was windier than I think I ever remember. I mean, I've lived around these parts for a long time. Oh, I know. And you walked hill every single day. Both. (laughs) Okay, windy, very rainy, very snowy. And you're right. We did. We failed miserably. And uh, and that that 30 day cha- didn't we do like a challenge thing? And yeah. Then we and we just, just prayed you all forgot about it, like <laughs> exactly. or that you didn't listen to that. I mean, that was the only time we prayed that people didn't listen to the episode. That yeah, we put out. that's really true. Yeah, we'll have to go look and see how many of you actually listened to that one. And hopefully, if you did do better than we did, and found a way. Maybe you live in Florida and it wasn't that hard. And so you did it. But uh, if you found a way, then please tell us what you did because we really lost our mojo on this one. We just couldn't seem to make it happen. Oh yeah. No, if you found the inspiration and the fire, then please send us an Instagram or Facebook message. We, we want to know what that is because we lost it. I mean, I was, I was bribing the kids to go out and feed the animals because I And I was praying that you would so I wouldn't (laughs) have to. Oh, I know. I think when I would text you, um, fed the alpacas, you 
had, you know, <laughs> like every celebration emoji <laughs> that you would send to me because it was, it was just, oh, it was awful. But I, I, I mean, you're right. I, I didn't mean to cut off you and say that you were, you know, making excuses because for me, when it's 30 miles per hour, raining or windy, blowing sideways, ice, rain, I mean, yeah, that's a no. Like yeah, I'm not yeah. going outside. Yeah. I am not going to be that outdoorsy mom that I dreamed I would be. No, I was the mama bear hunkered down for a long winter's nap. And I had several cups of coffee and the fire going, lots of games, <laughs> maybe three, four games to keep us going because I didn't, I did not want to go outside. But you know, the, the, the sad part of that is we do live in a climate. We, we get the four seasons, which is wonderful. Some of you don't. And, and I always hear people say that I talk to friends in the South that say, yeah, but you have the four seasons and, and that is wonderful. But they're in that mix. There are some days that are just awful. Long. Mm -hmm. They feel yeah. so long. And dark long. and yeah, and awful. But, uh, but, but we can't deny the fact that being outside is so good for us. And I don't know how we're going to be better next year than we were this year, because we're, we're just telling you, we, we need some ideas. But I do know that because I did have to go out and feed the animals, and you mm -hmm. did too, so we both yeah. had to do it, that once I'd get out there, and if I had the right clothes on, and if I, if I just spent a little bit of time trying to, you know, commune with the creatures <laughs> that we have, <laughs> not too much time, but just a little bit, Tried to work with them a little bit, especially the alpacas, because I'm trying to get them to uh, eat out of my hand and just trust me more. And it's funny how if you get focused on something instead of the weather, mm -hmm. it is a little bit easier. And it doesn't mean I stayed out there, you know, for more than about 10 minutes, but it did feel good. I mean, there is something about fresh air in your lungs. And it doesn't mean that if you had come up to me and said, oh, Brie, it looks like a day for a warm coat because it's a little <laughs> chilly or your umbrella and your mud boots because it's raining, I wouldn't have wanted to slap you across the yeah, face. That's really true. <laughs> that's really true. Yeah, it is, It's hard. It's That's the hardest part is wanting to get outside. But we were out more than I ever would have been if we hadn't had the farm. So I love that. I yeah. love that animals do force you because otherwise they will die. So you do have to go out and check their water and their food. And then once you get out there, it's hard to just come right back in. You know, you want to spend a little bit of time with them. Because well, when you, you spend like, 15 minutes bundling up to go out there, I can't <laughs> believe the get-ups I put on to stay warm. I, I really, I'm so glad people don't drive by and see us out there because it's kind of ridiculous. But layering, yeah. there's a reason why that is such a good idea and it does work. Well, dad said the other day that he he thought somebody stole your car. He didn't know <laughs> who was inside it. It looked like there was- I had my big hood on uh, from my sweatshirt. And yeah, I had, I think I had two hoods on from my, so I added the one for my coat. And yeah, I think he did. He thought, well, who is that? Who is that but person? I don't care because I was warm and that's all that mattered. And I did drive. That's the sad thing. How many feet is it to get to the alpacas? <laughs> I drove. Not good. I know. We, we <laughs> We did drive a lot up and down that hill instead of walking it, which was another thing that, you know, we, we had a goal that we were going to walk the hill every day. Didn't happen, but here's the deal. A home that heals exists to encourage and equip and share ideas. Some of those ideas that we share, they're going to work and they're going to be great. And sometimes those ideas are just going to stink. <laughs> Yeah. They're going to fail. And if you know it in advance, don't be afraid to send us, us a message and say, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not remember what last winter was like? Anyway, we, we love the honesty. We like the feedback. And oh, we love to hear from you. We do. We love to hear your ideas. But two, don't be afraid to share ideas that other people might think are crazy and other people aren't going to aren't gonna jump on board with. That's okay because what works for us might not work for you. Mm -hmm. And Good what point. works for your family might not work for others. And I just sat here and I thought of every kind of mom that could be listening. Cause maybe you are the mom, you listened to that challenge and you said challenge accepted and you did it every day. You got outdoors through the winter. And to me, you are superwoman. Mm -hmm. You are amazing. I love that you did that. And I am your biggest cheerleader. You're doing such a great job. But maybe you're the mom that only made it out on those cold, but you know, the sun is shining and the wind isn't blowing like crazy days. That's awesome too. Mm -hmm. God gave you special moments 
to enjoy his creation with your kids and you took advantage. Way to go. Like we want to cheer you on also. Or maybe you're the mom like me (laughs) that you found the closest parking spot to any store that you absolutely had to. I mean, there weren't any joy rides like joy errands. It was the stores you had to go to. Closest parking spot. Then as soon as you got home, you you put down the garage before you had to step out of your vehicle. You went inside with that cozy book and fire and you made lifelong memories with your kids hunkered down in your warm, 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 warm home. You know, That's I, awesome. I have a feeling knowing you too, you were really praising the Lord for that. Mm-hmm. You know, we really are grateful for our warm homes, mm-hmm. for places where we can find refuge. And that is just such a reminder to us, I think, of the Lord's... Um, his provision in our lives and and those who don't have that and how that's a way we can kind of help our kids be aware. You know how mm. awful it feels to go out and feed the animals. Some people tonight yeah. are not sure where they're going to sleep and yeah. it's an awful cold night. So yeah, we can use these things in so many ways, but yes, praise the Lord for a warm home. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's the biggest blessing of all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and helping your kids understand and appreciate all those blessings, you know, is is part of what makes a home the home that heals. Because when we have gratitude and thankfulness in our hearts, we're able to enjoy the good gifts that God gives us, even in times of, of lacking, you know, even mm-hmm. in times when we don't, there's a lot of things that we need that we don't have. Uh, we can we can still be grateful and thankful because we look around and there's always blessings that he has bestowed so upon us. So true. Amen, sister. Mm. And so now we've eaten crow and um, a little humble pie, <laughs> but I'm hungry. I'm ready for lunch. I don't know about you. Oh, yes. And so when we come back, we're going to share a barefoot bluff update that, you know, did, didn't happen over the winter. It's happening now as we turn towards spring and we're excited to share it with you. But again, Just remember, A Home That Heals is a community where we get to be open and honest, and we will admit when we fail, and we will be real with you, and thank you for being real with us. Now that the weather is getting a little bit better, it's been fun to get out and work with the horses. And we are so excited to start doing some um, new challenges and setting some goals with them. And one of those is we are going to do a trail competition with Ruby. She is our seven-year-old mare horse. She is such a sweetheart. And so you'll have to hop on Instagram and see some pictures of her because we love her. And I am so excited to be working with her previous owner, Bessie, on getting her ready for this trail competition because we don't know what we're doing. I was going to say, what is a trail (laughs) competition? I remember you used to do the fair thing where you had to do some trail things, but what's a trail competition? Yeah, it's just, they have different obstacles that you go through. You know, you can have the horse walk over a bridge or go through um, some logs. I I don't know, to be honest, this is, (laughs) this is the first the first one I'll be going to. So I'll have to give you an update afterwards, but it's just different challenges to see how well your horse trusts you and the communication you have with your horse. It's not quite like showmanship where you're, you know, showing off um, how they look and their, their skills in the sense of trotting and all of that, but it's more, more brain work really, you Mm -hmm. know, of, of different encounters that they might find when they're on the trail, you know, if you're out trail riding. So we went and we met with Bessie who used to own Ruby. She was willing to meet with us and talk with us. And, and it's one of my sons is the, the main one that's going to be working with her. And so I just was standing back listening to them work. And I thought this one tip that she gave him was so good in just life, you know, and I found that with horses, there are so many life lessons Mm -hmm. that we can learn when we're working with them. And so we were standing there and uh, my son was holding on to the lead rope with Ruby and Ruby kind of kept perking her ears up and looking away. You know, we're in a new area and a new spot and she was just kind of looking at different noises or different, you know, shadows or, or image, you know, people that were walking by. And so Bessie reminded him that, you know what, having her attention is absolutely key. If they're not paying attention to you, you basically, you mean nothing to them. 
You, you have no relationship. You have no control. They are telling you, hey, that over there is more important than you. And you need to, you know, expect that she give you respect. You know, you need to demand that in a loving way, Mm -hmm. but you need to demand that she pays attention to you. So when she tries to look away, just kind of jiggle on that lead rope and remind her, nope, nope, your attention needs to be right here. And when you have her attention, then she is focused in on you and what you're asking of her, even if it's just to stand there. And it's safer for her if her attention is on you. Because if she's looking out and and beyond, she might get spooked at that shadow that she sees or that sound that she sees because she's looking outward and she's not paying attention to you. So it's actually, it could be harmful to the horse. It could hurt her for her attention to not be on you. You are her leader. Mm -hmm. You need to lead and guide her. And oh, (laughs) I sat there and just thought, of how that is like my attention being either on Christ or my attention being on the world. Mm-hmm. And and like we've been talking about, the scary things that are out there, the boogeyman, you know, the the real things. These aren't, you know, some of the things Ruby was seeing were pretend, you know, and shadows or or things, but some of them were very real. Just like some of the things I see are real. And Yet, when I keep my eyes on him, when I keep my attention on him, I can filter it all through his wisdom and his grace and his peace. And and he deserves my attention. Mm. He deserves my respect. He has earned it. Yeah, he is worthy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that reminds me of that old hymn. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glorious face. face. I, I love that old hymn. I've mm-hmm. always loved that one. And so, yeah, let's remember to turn our eyes upon Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a scary world out there. You know, horses, they fight or flight. That's the way they operate mm-hmm. uh, unless they trust their master. Mm-hmm. And so we need to do the same. Oh, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today on A Home That Hails. And again, we love to hear from you. Please make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast. Please share it with your friends. And then reach out to us. Send us your messages from Facebook or Instagram on what you're doing in your homes to make it A Home That Heals. A Home That Heals is produced in partnership with 89.5 KTSY. To find out more about them, go to ktsy.org.